Oh, Andrew, thank you very much for joining Energy Live News. I would like to be honest with you. When uh, last week uh, we were reading about uh, a new project that uh, will harness the body heat of dancers to help power a venue in Glasgow, we could barely, you know, uh, believe what we, we read. Can you tell us a little bit more about this new body heat project? That statement's not entirely accurate. The body heat will contribute to the heating and cooling of the venue. It doesn't power the venue in terms of kind of electrical power. But yeah, it's, a, it's certainly a very innovative solution for heating and cooling a venue. And, you know, the technology is existing, but it's, uh, it's the application of the technology, which is really interesting. And uh, it's certainly the first time it's been done in this environment. How does this uh, technology work? So we're installing uh, about 17 boreholes around the venue. So there will be a ground source heat supply that comes from those boreholes. If you think of a normal air conditioning cassette and whereby that air conditioning would extract the supply and take out heat and cooling from a venue, it would just disappear into the atmosphere. Instead of it going into the atmosphere, we pipe it to these boreholes where that heat, that excess heat that comes from the bodies of people dancing in the venue would then charge the batteries, the thermal batteries of the, of the borehole. And th by doing that, it can be stored there for a longer period of time and then can be redistributed as a heating and cooling load, which is unusual for, for ground source, which can usually only apply to heating. In terms of the changes that you have to do in the venue, in the actual venue, inside the venue. What about that? Because uh, I have read that uh, the drilling of uh, these 17 uh, boreholes is expected to start, uh, you know, in the following weeks. Is that right? So the, the, the borehole drilling will start soon, but the, we, have, we have land around the venue as well. So we're not, it's, it's not going to interfere with our operations. I guess we're quite fortunate in that way. We've, we've got space around us that we can, we can put in this system without interfering. What would be really interesting is what would be that solution for a venue that's in a really built up urban environment? You know, how could a body heat system be applied to that setting? Uh, but that's not where we're at at this stage. We're just looking at a, a pilot system for our own venue, which is a large kind of industrial footprint, but we also have some, some, some ground around the venue to do that. Which was uh, the initial idea behind the project that made you to, uh, you know, to, to have uh, this decision and apply and deploy this uh, technology? And also, uh, we have read that this kind of te uh, technology is predicted to reduce uh, the site's energy usage and save 70 tons of carbon dioxide every year. Is that correct? Sure. It has the potential to do that. Yeah. What the first phase we are projecting to uh, uh, save 30 tons of carbon dioxide per year. But we have the systems designed to scale up and to be applied to other parts of the site and also new buildings, which we're developing over the coming years. And we anticipate that we'd obviously the, the saving would almost double, potentially triple once that development's in place. So it started by looking at our, our building 2019 pre-pandemic. We were a very, very busy venue. We had a quarter of a million people through the doors to our events. And like any venue, we heat up very quickly. And, um, you know, you're very just conscious of this energy and this heat that's just disappearing through the roof of the venue. Um, so we engaged with the geothermal engineers to start looking at what a solution could be for a, a more environmental friendly way to, to manage building heat and cooling system. And it, it came from that. It just came from a kind of conversation back then. And it's been developed over the last couple of years. And finally, we got some funding through to, to, to realize the project. So we're, we're, we're on site in the coming weeks and uh, hoping to have the commit commissioned by the end of the year. Which is uh, the current capacity of uh, the venue? And also, I would like to ask you, of course, uh, to come up with this finger, uh, the 30 tones uh, of carbon dioxide, probably you have taken uh, into consideration that probably uh, the venue is in full capacity. How many people, how many customers, how many dancers uh, they need to, you know, to reach this target? So that, that's based on an average of about 5,000 a week coming through the venue. We, we, we were doing that very comfortably. We have four venues at SWG3. One is a small venue, 130, but one's 500. And then we have a 1,000 capacity and a 1,300 capacity. This system is really just based around our 1,000 capacity venue and our 1,300 capacity venue. So we still have additional venues to integrate to the system. But this particular phase is just looking at the larger spaces. When do you expect uh, to introduce uh, this system? By the end of the year.
How important do you feel that it is for businesses, especially in uh, the music industry, especially in the arts industry, you know, to, uh, to deploy this kind of uh, technologies uh, and do their bit to help in this fight against climate change? I mean, I think all businesses have the uh, the responsibilities to, to to look at that, but it, and certainly within the kind of music and, and kind of cultural industries, then we, we engage with a, a really a public audience, an audience that comes to our venues. With their, 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 you know, it's a very, I guess they're a very engaged audience. So so it's important to to be kind of leading the way in, in on these uh, aspects of sustainability. And you know, I think artists will start to you know. We're already seeing it with some touring parties where artists are asking about the, the kind of green footprint of the venue and you know what who the what the energy supply is and that's just going to increase. So you know if venues don't take the lead, then I think they're going to get left behind and uh, artists and audiences might start to think differently about where they perform or where they they go to enjoy events. <laughs>